New World Boss. Here we go, boys. We got a New World Boss. Welcome back to another Bit Heroes video. Today we're going to talk about the new world boss that they've added in towards the end of tier 10. And that's actually not a new thing for them to do. Orlag was added in towards the end of like tier 5 or 6, and then Netherworld was added in towards the end of 6 or 7. Um, it was only the Melvin Factor that was added in with a new tier, so this is not a new move for them to do. But anyways, so the end of tier 10, if you completed the Echelon Zone, you will unlock this world boss, and you can do it. It is only in tier 10 currently. And it is a party of three. So as far as compositions, you want to have a tank in the front, a tank in the back, a DPS in the middle, and you should be good to go. Uh, make sure one of the tanks has high stamina, make sure one of the tanks has low stamina, and you can play around if you want a bait in the front and a bait in the back. We ran a bait tank in the front, it went fine, we had no problems with it, but everybody in the group had 5.5 to 5.6 thousand total stats. And you can probably participate in this if your stats are a little bit lower, but it seems like 5.5 is a good place to be. Because there's less people on the team, everybody has to kind of pull their weight a little bit better and just make sure that your win rate's nice and high. So there you go. Three-man team, 5.5 thousand total stats is going to give you a nice smooth win rate, assuming everybody has good gear. And, well, there you go. As always, the art is an A+. Plus. The art in this game is phenomenal. Uh, love it. And if you like it so much that you want to add these guys on your team, well, we're going to talk about the familiars and the fusions and show you exactly how to do that. So here we go. Let's start off with the gear. So this is the cosmetic. This guy's wearing the zombie potion. This is actually Ball Breaker in-game. So a little shout out to him. He helped me with some of the schematics. Um, you have a nice little cyborg head and body. Here is the head right here, and then the cosmetic body is right here as well. You also have a beautiful cosmetic mount, which is Roy with the cybernetic kind of vibe going on. And this mount is more rare than the Melvin Factory, and I think that's a good thing. It gives you something to look forward to, and it gives you some sort of prestige. The Melvin Factory mount was so common, everybody had it, that there was really no point to wearing it to show it enough. So those are the cosmetics for you. And when you put them all together, it looks like this. And again, he's got a zombie potion on, so that's why his skin is a different color. So you're only seeing the, uh, the robotic parts as the part of the cosmetic. Jumping into the mythic items, so there is a DPS mythic and there is a tank mythic. The DPS mythic, again, has a great cosmetic. However, the bonus... Deal 10% increased damage when the team, when the enemy team only has one unit alive. So the bonus only makes sense or it's only valuable when you're fighting against one enemy, which is basically if you're fighting against the final boss of Trials or Gauntlet. And this one doesn't really shine for me. I don't want to carry around a mythic just to have a bonus some of the time doesn't really doesn't really do it for me and when you're talking it's tier 10 there's plenty other mythic options for people and if you're using the poly blaster you might want to double the bonus um, star weave etc opens up a lot more options this one doesn't really shine I don't really I don't really see a time where I would choose this over choosing like 4% dual strike all the time or choosing the necrosis that gives me more SP so I'm not I'm not excited about this not every item in the game is gonna be best in slot anyways but um, not excited about that. What I am excited about is the tank mythic. So gain 5% damage reduction while all teammates are alive. Oh yes, sign me up. It's a chest piece or a body piece. It's the same bonus that you get from wearing the Oblit set, which is 15% damage reduction while all teammates are alive for the four piece bonus. Um, the stat breakdown on this, if you up tier it all the way to tier 10, is also the same stat breakdown. So you're going to have 35 um, agility and 35 stamina for example, if you put it into, if you reforge it into attack. So the stats are great. The bonus is great. I love it. Um, you will need to have a star weave most likely to fit this in with the build that you want to run. But this is awesome. Um, if I was a player that up tiered fish and barrel from 8 to 9 and from 9 to 10, I'd be a little bit salty right now. But, you know, that's how these games kind of go. New things will come out that are better than old things. That's just how it goes. You know, if we're talking about cars, faster, faster cars are going to keep coming out. So to expect anything else doesn't really make any sense. And right now, this is a faster car. I like this bonus a lot. This would be my favorite. Um, going into the set, so there are two sets. There's a two-piece set for tank and a two-piece set for DPS. So they kind of wanted to keep an even 50-50 split on the number of sets for everybody. And here we go. So it's a two-piece set, which means that you don't necessarily need to have a Starweave. In fact, Starweave cannot help a two-piece set. For Starweave to work, you need um, at least a three-piece set. 
So it's nice to have options for players that don't get Star Weave or don't want to get Star Weave. Um, but if we're talking about top tier builds, then we're, we're going to have to kind of keep Star Weave in mind. Just, you know, because it's still relevant. But anyways, um, it's a ring piece and a main hand. The bonus reads, damage received from Ricochet. Redirect or bouncing attacks deal 20% less damage. We talked to the devs and we had them confirm that the 20% less damage here does not stack beyond the 75% damage reduction cap. So when tier 10 came out, they capped damage reduction at 75%. This bonus does not stack beyond it. And because of that, um, this set bonus really, really falls down the priority list. It's, it's a little bit of a shame. Doesn't really make a lot of sense for me to run this. Um, you know, would you consider running a build where you have 55% damage reduction and other bonuses? And then when this set bonus is available to you, when you ricochet, redirect, bounce, whatever, um, then you're getting the 20% here to bring you to cap. Doesn't really make sense. One, because um, ricochet and bouncing attacks aren't that common. Familiars in this world boss do it. Familiars in the, the Melvin world boss, they do it, and you see it in PvP. But other than that, you don't really fight a lot of it. Redirect's kind of cool, but I don't know. When you consider all things together, I would rather just have a very, very high damage reduction all the time than have a bonus like this. So that, it, that isn't going to help me more often than not. And this might be something in the game that's designed to counter bouncing attacks and Melborgs and, and Arsenal and things like that. But... The tank is not the guy that you need to protect. Even if this bonus kicks in and the tank stays alive, the bouncing attacks and the if you have offensive pets or if you have offensive brain augments, um, those augments, if it's attack team specifically, they're still going to tear apart your team. So the tank might stay alive, but the whole team dies. So it doesn't really achieve that goal if you're trying to counterplay against bouncing attacks. It doesn't really make any sense. Also, since we're on the t since we're on the subject. Um, all of the damage from a Melborg with a with an offensive augment comes from the augment. It doesn't come from the skill. You can literally redirect every single attack that a Melborg does, and the brain proc will still kill the enemy team. Because when a when an attack is uh, redirected, it still has a chance for the brain to proc. So it's not working for me, guys. I think I think you guys you're picking up what I'm putting down. As far as the skills, the skills are good. I still think the Basalt Axe skills are better, but these skills are good. So Spread Shield teammates for 0 SP, that's awesome. Spread Heal teammates for 1 SP, that's awesome. The Drain Attack is actually really good. In fact, if you're hitting like 4 or 5 enemies with a Drain Attack, um, you're probably going to heal yourself a ton. If you're a Bane Tank, that might heal you up to full. So it's really good. Um, kind of similar to the Drain Attack that we got on the on the Hellfire Axe, and it was a good way, good way to proc the Deflect in Raid 6, but we're not going to talk about that too much. So the skills are pretty good. The skills make more sense for a bait tank or for someone who's not on the front lines because um, the heal skill is a teammate. You're shielding teammates. You're not shielding yourself, and the heal is a heal teammates. Um, I don't mean... I'm not saying that these effects aren't going to hit you, but you have a higher multiplier value if it's a heal self and a shield self like Basalt has. And in top tier content, usually for me, um, the tank is the one that's taking all, the, taking all the hits and possibly dying. So you want more sustain for yourself and less sustain for your team. But this will, this will definitely work for you. If you don't have Basalt Axe, it's nice to have this one. Um, really good skills. I still think Basalt is better. And again, the bonus kind of scratched my head on that one. But, you know, that might change. We'll see. Um, going on to the two-piece DPS set. So it's an offhand and a neck piece. And if we can just scroll down a little bit. Skills that cost SP deal 15% increased damage. So this is the same bonus that we saw on the Inferno set. Skills that cost SP deal increased damage. Which means it has the same problem as the Inferno set. So the problem with the Inferno set is... The, fir the big thing is that... This does not buff your pet proc. Whether you have an offensive or a defensive pet, this does not benefit that in any way. And as I just said, in some cases, the pet is doing more output than the player or the familiar. The pet's doing a ton of damage. And if you're going to give up 15% pet damage, doesn't make sense to me. And then the other problem is, unless you have some sort of SP regen mechanic, then the way it goes is your first attack has no SP, and then your next attack has 1 SP, and then you have no SP, and then 1 SP, and then no SP, and then 1 SP, just like that. So that means every other attack has 0 SP, which means every other attack is not going to get this 15% bonus. 
That's why I don't like the Augment chip that has this bonus, and that's why I don't like the Inferno set, and I don't like this one. That um, it doesn't work for me. Now, the one time that this set looks good is if you had the setup with the Poly Blaster, which doubles the Mythic bonus, and something like the Necrosis Necklace, or something like the Meteor Chain Necklace, and Necrosis is being a little bit better. Some sort of SP regeneration mechanic that gives you a lot of SP, therefore you're doing a lot of SP attacks, then this bonus starts to look good. It still falls short because it doesn't uh, buff your pet proc, but check this out. You can't fit the Poly Blaster and the Necrosis Necklace with this build. It, you can't fit it together because this has a neck slot. And since this is a two-piece set, it can't benefit from Starwave. So you can't you can't mix in the one build that would give you enough SP to make this bonus viable. So if you guys, if I'm totally missing some sort of build or some, some something's obvious to you guys, let me know in the comments and uh, feel free to make fun of me. But I'm just not seeing the synergy with these items. The cosmetics, I'm sure they look cool. I haven't seen the offhand in game, but I don't like this bonus. It has the same problems that Inferno has. I don't really get it. As far as the utility though, you're basically getting a four piece set bonus off of two pieces. So if you're a player that doesn't finish a set or finish a build, then this becomes interesting. But you still need to be able to kill a heroic world boss to be able to even get this set. Unless you're gonna um, destroy legendaries and then, then craft it. That's the other way, there is a workaround. So if you can do the workaround, then that kind of makes sense. So, let's move on, let's move on. Let's take a look at these familiars. Let's start off at the Mythic. So there he is, Kaleido. We've seen a lot of fusions with Kaleido, and we're seeing a lot more today. That's exactly what we're gonna talk about. So here we go. Finally, we've got a new Mythic healer added into the game. So Wallog, he was either the second or the third Mythic added into the game, and we have not seen a Mythic healer since. Well, here we go, and this guy has a whole lot of healing. So looking at the skills, he's got a bounce attack. I just want to be clear that the bounce attack here, um, you cannot bounce off a single enemy. So if you have only one enemy remaining, I know the skill kind of reads like it, it possibly could bounce off the same guy. It cannot. I've tested this with Melborg. He has the same skill. You cannot bounce attack on the single enemy. Can't do it. Now on the bright side, he has other options for his zero SP attack. He can spread heal teammates. He can spread shield teammates. Those are amazing. He's got a heal target, even more amazing. He's got a 1 SP attack for this enemy, so he can put out some damage. And then check this out, a 1 SP Resurrect. You can use it once per adventure, like a mount skill. A 1 SP Resurrect, that's pretty crazy. Now how useful that will be to you depends on you know what your experience is in, what, what kind of content that you're pushing. But a 1 SP Resurrect, I almost wonder if they're going to buff the old heal pew that we got in Jammy, because that had a 4 SP Resurrect, and this guy has a 1 SP Resurrect. I don't know if they're going to do that. But... Um, this is not a video about the jammy gun, and you guys probably know how I feel about the jammy gun. But looking back at this guy, his stats are cool. His stamina is not too high, not too low. His agility is super high. That might have you scratching your head, but honestly, with a healer, um, you want a lot of agility because that way he can heal frequently. He's not going to overheal. You can react if you take a bunch of damage. You're not going to get hit like three times or four times before you can react. He's going to slip a heal in there. He's going to get some shielding in there. So if you, the sole pur purpose of this guy on your team is support, he's going to check that box. He's going to do phenomenal. Now, if we want to nitpick, and we really should nitpick because it's a Mythic Familiar, and Mythic Familiars cost a ton. Um, if we're going to nitpick, his bonuses are not perfect. And so fun fact, you can actually dual strike and or quad strike with a revive skill. So in the very rare scenario where everybody's dead and he's alive, you do actually have a chance of dual striking and quad striking and reviving everybody um, with the res. That's a cool skill. It can happen. Um, but, you know, think of how many times per year that's going to actually pay off for you. It's probably not going to be worth it. But it is possible. It can happen. You never know. But the problem I have with dual strike and quad strike is since he doesn't really focus on multi-hit attacks, yes, his basic attack can hit a couple times, um, but since his focus is not three hit and four hit and five hit skills, um, the best thing to put on him is an augment brain that is per turn. So that way when he's healing, you're still going to have the, the augment brain is still going to be effective. If you put a augment brain that is um, when he attacks, if you do a heal, then you're going to waste the brain. Does that make sense? 
So the best augment brain for him is per turn. And dual strike and quad strike do not buff the augment brain at all. And just based on what I was telling you about the, the output of the pet proc or the augment brain proc, is the augment proc is so important to the total output of a character or a familiar that you want to buff it. Which means for someone like this, you want to have empower chance, you want to have damage, you want to have speed. Any combination of those three is going to be better than dual strike and better than quad strike. It doesn't mean that dual strike and quad strike do nothing. They're not completely trash. But if you want to nitpick and talk about perfect and optimal, there you go. Now, I think they're intentionally not making a completely perfect familiar, because if you have perfect familiars now, there's no reason to look at for anything in the future. So every familiar is going to have flaws and weaknesses and things like that. But if you're going to consider going all in and investing in a mythic familiar, you should know everything about it. And then to make him, you need a Kaleido, and you need two of these legendary Kaleido um, fusions. And we'll talk about those right now. So going over, Turnbot. Turnbot is a new bait tank that's been added into the game. If you missed out on Krundy, well, here you go. If you missed out on Krundy, um, this is one of your options. There's a second bait tank in here that we'll get to in a second as well. 28% damage reduction, 1% absorb chance, and then you see his stats right there. Um, stats are pretty good, man. Stats are good, especially for a bait tank. You would be very happy to have this guy. A 0 SP heal self, a 0 SP shield self, and then an... Uh, attack self skill for closest enemy and then 2 SP for random enemy he's really good he's really really good um, you you really need to stable him so that his stamina gets up enough so that you can actually you know use him but familiar stamina scales higher faster than player stamina so when we get to tier 11 and 12 his stamina is also going to kind of boost a little bit with respect to um, how much players increase their stamina so his stats look good for a bait tank. For a tank that intentionally has low stamina, he looks amazing. The bonuses look awesome here. You might say, well, maybe I want 30% damage reduction. If you put perfect damage reduction augments on him, you can actually get him to 76% um, damage reduction, and the cap is 75%. So him having 1% absorb chance, not a problem at all. In fact, it's actually a good thing. But that is perfect augments. So there you go. But... Heal self, shield self, amazing. His 1 SP attack skill is not the most exciting thing, but it's still going to do a ton of damage. It's still great. Um, he's awesome. A plus. A plus on this guy. Um, we're going to actually drop down and talk about the other bait tank. So, again, if you missed on Melborg, you've got another option here. So, 25% damage reduction, 2.5% absorb chance. Again, same thing goes. You can add in 48% damage reduction with augments. 48% <clears throat> damage reduction augments. And that means him not having completely capped damage reduction is fine. You're getting absorbed chance. You're going to be fine there. You're not even going to notice. Um, as far as his skills, so closest enemy, heal self, shield teammates, and then target enemy. And he has a, um, a target teammate with a heal. That's amazing. This whole kid is amazing. He's got a shield self, a heal teammates, target teammate, and a target damage skill. I mean, what more do you want? This this is phenomenal. It only takes three um, Teal'ks. So this guy's also known as Teal'k Bait. It only takes three Teal'ks and 15 materials to get this guy. I mean, come on. If you didn't get Krundy, this this is amazing. This skill set's amazing right here. Um, comparing the two, Heal Self, Shield Self, because he has the Heal Target Teammate and a Snipe, this whole combination to me just looks amazing. That looks awesome. So if you already had Krundy, it doesn't really make sense to go farm a whole entire separate legendary bait tank. But if you missed Krundy, I mean, my God, this thing's amazing. Awesome stats, awesome bonuses, awesome skills. Um, for reference, Krundy has a one SP attack strongest. And I mean, my goodness, shielding teammates, healing target what more do you want that's amazing if i had to pick between the two i'd probably pick this guy over crundy honestly this guy he just he looks good man he looks good that's exciting um let's look over here so the last of the kaleido fusions this is a dps familiar 25 percent empower five percent dual strike and he's got a little bit he's got a, a forced ricochet here he's got an attack two times on a target closest furthest and target um, he falls into the trap that all DPS familiars fall into, that there's so many healers that can do a great amount of damage, that it doesn't really make sense to 
have a DPS familiar that can only do damage. It's really hard to fit in. If you're talking about Trials and Gauntlet and you're a tank player, you you would still benefit from having two tanks and a healer total than having a tank, a healer, and a DPS. Because in Trials and Gauntlet, there's so much attack furthest and attack random and attack target and attack weakest, strongest, all that, that you really want to have two tanks if you have a three-man team. Um, and then if you're a DPS player, you need a tank in the front and a tank in the back, and you want one of those guys to have some heals like this guy. If, you, if one of your tanks can help heal or Krundy has a spread heal or something like that, it helps so much. It, it definitely helps so much. So, very hard to recommend a DPS similar unless they give us more content that has four-man groups and five-man groups. Maybe Gremlin Dungeon is a hint that we're going to have more content in the future that has a five-man team that you can really flush out your team with, with different familiars. Korg, my boy Korg over here. So, speaking of healers, very similar to the Mythic Familiar, he's got a revive skill. This one's 2 SP instead of 1 SP. Dual strike and quad strike, so it's the same scenario on with augments and bonuses and stuff like that. So it's it's good, but it's not optimal when you put on a per turn brain. And his stats are fine. He's got a good amount of health. He's got a bunch of speed. So his 0 SP is attack target, 0 SP spread heal teammates, 0 SP spread shield teammates, and then heal target teammates and revive. If your goal is for this guy to heal, awesome. He's awesome. And let's see what else. All right, Roy. So for epics, um, my theory on epics is usually epics are is for free to play players. You can get everything done in the game that you want to get with epic play, with epic done. And if I'm gonna push players towards an epic familiar, especially when we're already talking tier 10, I'm gonna push them towards the expedition because expedition gives them a free legendary brain proc that comes with a familiar. So that's the only downside to this guy. If you're gonna go for an epic familiar, you might as well go with an expedition and get a free brain proc. Now, if for some reason you already have a brain proc or that's not an issue for you, then this guy looks good. A um, little bit tanky. He's got some defensive bonuses. He's got a spread heal. He's got a heal attack target. No problem. And then replicator. So kind of same idea, another DPS familiar. So I'm not seeing a heal on this guy. And he falls into the same trap of DPS familiars. But there you go, man. That is all the gear. That is all the cosmetics, loot, everything. Korg's awesome. If you want a legendary that, is, that their job is just to do healing, Korg's has an amazing skill set. Um, I do think a Melborg with a defensive brain, if you're hitting multiple enemies, is going to do more healing and damage at the same time. But this revive skill, if you're trying to get through Gremlin, this revive skill makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. Um, my personal favorite is Glars Dose. If I did not have Krundy, I would be farming this guy right here, right now. I would be farming this guy nonstop. Um, 25% damage reduction. If you add that in with 48% damage reduction, you're very, you're getting very, very close to cap. And again, those are perfect augments, but you're getting very close to cap. You got a little bit of absorb, no problems, no complaints there. And then the skill set, the stats are awesome. And then the skill set is, it's just crazy. Heal self, shield teammates, damage target, and then heal target teammate. That's probably perfect. I can't think of that being any better. I really can't think of that being any better than it currently is. That's amazing. So, this guy, probably best in game. Um, if I did not have Krundy, I'd be farming him right now. And there you go. So, I'm still waiting to see a, a high stamina tank in the game that has similar... If you give me a high stamina tank that has the same skills as this, you know, when he's fully stabled in tier 10, if he has like 1500 stamina or 1600 stamina, I mean, that's like the dream team right there. All the familiars, the art looks phenomenal. Great job to the to the devs. And that'll do it, boys. So let me know what you think. Let me know if I got anything wrong. As always, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.